I think the BA is not as valuable as it looks. I also think the PhD is not as valuable as it looks. Oh, so you know how to sort, hurt a guy. I sort of feel it's it's a, it's 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 a it's a problem across the board. You, of course, famously started the Teal Fellowship mm-hmm. uh, as a program, mm-hmm. which. Correct me if I'm wrong on this. Uh, 2005 is when student debt became non-dischargeable, yes. even in bankruptcy. The, the Bush 43 bankruptcy revision. Right. Now, that yes, is... Yes, and so if you if you don't pay off your student loans um, when you're 65, the government will garnish your Social Security wages to uh, to pay off your student debt. Right. This is, this is amazing that this exists in a, in a modern society. And of course, well, so let me ask, am I right that you were attacking... Uh, what was necessary to keep the college mythology going, and you were frightened that um, college might be enervating some of our our sort of most dynamic minds. Um, were you responding? Well, I think you know. I think I think there are sort of a lot of different critiques one can one can sure. have of, of the universities. I, I I think the debt one is a is a very simple very simple one. It's um, it's uh, it's always dangerous to be. Burden with too much debt, it, it sort of does limit your, your your freedom of of action, and it seems especially pernicious to do this um, super early in your career. And so, if you if out of the gate you owe a hundred thousand dollars, and uh, you know it's never clear you can get out of that hole, that's um, that's going to either demotivate you or it's going to push you into uh, into maybe you know slightly higher paying, uh, very uncreative um, professions of the of the sort that uh, are probably you know, less good at moving our whole society forwards. And so I, I think, uh, yeah, so I think, I think the whole thing is, is, is extraordinarily per- pernicious. So, and it's, you know, and it's, 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 it is, it was one of these things where, um, you know, when, and I started talking about this back in, um, back in 2010, uh, 2000, 2000, um, it was already, it was already like, it, you know, it was controversial, but it was not, uh, it was like, you know, younger people all agreed with me. The younger people did. Younger, and they, you know, and 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 it's a, a decade later. It's a lot crazier. It hasn't, you know, we haven't yet completely won, but uh, but I think there are sort of more and more people who who agree with us. I, I think I, I think at this point, um, the Gen X parents of college students tend to agree, whereas I would say the baby boomer parents, you know, fifteen years ago would not have agreed. The, the two thousand eight crisis was a big watershed in this too, where right. where um, you could say the tracking. Debt, you know, roughly made sense as long as everything, all the tracked careers worked. And 2008 really blew up, you know, consulting, banking, you know, sort of a number of the more tracked professions got got blown up. Um, and so that was kind of a watershed. Now, something that is, I mean, this is uh, incredibly dangerous, but also therefore quite interesting. If you imagine that the baby boomers have in some sense, in order to keep the structure of the university going, have loaded it up with administrators, have hiked the tuition much faster than even medical inflation, mm-hmm. let alone general mm-hmm. inflation. Um, this becomes a crushing debt problem for people who are entering the system. Mm-hmm. I saw a recent article that said that the um, company that, uh, I think it's called Seeking Arrangements, which it, uh, introduces um, older men and women with money to younger men and women with a need for money for some sort of ambiguous hybridized dating companionship mm-hmm. financial transfer. And the claim was that lots of students were using this uh, supposed sugar daddying and sugar mommy, I don't, don't know what the terminology is, um, in order to alleviate their debt burden. It's almost as if the baby boomers, uh, in so creating a system, are subjecting their own children to things that are pushing them towards a gray area a few clicks before you get to honest prostitution. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I look. I, 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 I don't. I don't want to impute too much intentionality. No, how, no, no. How no this it's happened. A, you know, I think it's somewhat think emergent. A lot of these. It was mostly emergent. Um, mostly, uh, mostly these things. People, you know, um, uh, yeah, that we had sort of somewhat cancerous. We don't distinguish real growth from cancerous growth. And then, you know, once the cancer sort of metastasizes at a certain size, you know, you have, you sort of somehow try to keep the whole thing going and it doesn't make that much, that much sense. Um, but, uh, but yes, I, 
look, I think I think one of the reasons, uh, one of the challenges, and right. on our side, let's 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 be a little bit more self critical here on on um, on this is that the question we always are confronted with: Well, what is the alternative? How do you actually do, do something? And um, and it is, you know, it's not obvious what the individual alternatives are. You know, on an individual level, if you get into a, a elite university, it probably still makes sense to go. You know, it probably doesn't make sense to go to number 100 or something like this. Yeah, I think that's but, right. Um, but, but so there is sort of a way it can still work individually, even if it does not work, you know, for, for our country as a whole. Um, and, and, and so there are sort of all these, all these challenges in, um, in, um, in, 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 you know, coming up with alternate tracks. Like I think, I think in software, there's some degree to which people are can be hired if they're just good at coding and it's not quite as critical that they have a computer science degree, you know, can, can one do this in other, other right. careers, other fields? Um, I would tend to think one could, it's been, it's been slow to happen. Well, so you and I have been excited about a great number of things that have been taking place outside of the institutional mm -hmm. system. But one of the things that I, I'm continue, I continue to be mystified by is that we are somewhat politically divided where you are well known as a conservative. And I really come from a fairly radical progressive um, streak. So we have this common view of a lot of the problems, but sometimes we come to very different ideas about how those problems should mm -hmm. be solved. Mm -hmm. Do you want to maybe just try riffing, uh, sure. figuring out, like, assume that we somehow found ourselves in a position of some, some degree of power with an ability to direct a little bit more than we have currently. What would you do to create the preconditions? Um, so not necessarily picking particular projects, but what would you try to do to create the preconditions where people are really dreaming about futures, both at a technological level, family formation, um, making our uh, civil society healthier? What, what, where would you, where would you uh, start to work first? Well, I, there, I know there's a lot of things that it's all, I always, I'm always a little bit uncomfortable with this, this sort of question because you can turn um, it on me too, because, um, you know, I feel like, uh, you know, we're not going to be dictators of the United States. And then, you know, there are all sorts of things you, we could do if we were dictators. If, um, uh, but, but certainly, um, look, I would, I would, I would, I would look at the college debt thing very seriously. Uh, I would say that, uh, you know, it's dischargeable in bankruptcy. And if, um, and if, um, and if, um, if, <coughs> if people, um, go bankrupt, um, then part of the debt has to be paid for by the university that, uh, that did it. There has to be some sort of local accountability. So this would be, Love that. that would be sort of a more right-wing answer. The left-wing answer is we should, you know, socialize the debt in, in some ways and the universities should never pay for it, which would be more the, you know, Sanders, uh, Warren approach. But, uh, but, um, but, uh, but the, so that, that'd be, that'd be one version. I think, uh, you know, I think there is, um, I think, I think there is, you know, I think one of the main ways inequality has manifested in our society in the last 20, 30 years. I think it's going to, I think it's more stagnation than inequality. Right. But just on the inequality side, it's, uh, it's the runaway housing costs. And, and there's sort of, there's a baby boomer version where you have super strict zoning laws so that the house prices go up and the house is your nest egg. It's not a place to live. It's your nest egg for retirement. And I would, uh, yeah, I would, I would try to figure out some ways to dial, dial that stuff back, back massively. And, um, and that's, probably an intergenerational transfer where it's bad for the asset prices of baby uh, boomer homeowners, but um, better for younger people to, to get started uh, in, uh, in sort of family formation or uh, starting house households. What do you think about the idea of a CED, a college equivalency degree, where you can prove that you have a level of knowledge that would be equivalent, let's say, to a graduating Harvard chemistry major, right? Or, or, or fraction thereof, where you have the ability to prove that through some sort of online delivery mechanism, you can- Great idea. I love it. Yeah. I, I think it's very hard to implement. Again, I think, I think these things are hard to do, well, but, again, but great idea. There's a possibility of- But you know, look, look we, we have all these people who have, who have something like Stockholm syndrome, where um, <laughs> they, 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 you know, if you, if you, if you got a- Harvard chemistry degree. Right. And if you suspect that, you know, actually the knowledge could be had by a lot of people. And if it's just a set of tests you have to pass, um, that your degree would be a lot uh, less special. You will, you'll resist this very, very hard. Um, you know, if, if you're, if you're, 
in an um, in an HR department or in a company um, um, hiring people, um, you will want to hire people who went to a good college because you went to a good college. And if we broadened the hiring and said we're going to hire all sorts of people, maybe maybe that's self defeating for uh, for your own position. So I think I think there are you know I, th- I think one should not underestimate how many people you know have have a, have a form of Stockholm syndrome here. So some other ideas. Mm-hmm. Um, at some point when we were talking about, and, and I should have said earlier that the Teal Fellowship, uh, for those who don't know, is a program that has historically uh, at least began paying very young people who'd been admitted to colleges mm-hmm. to drop out of those colleges. So they got to keep the mm-hmm. idea that they'd been admitted to some uh, fairly yes. prestigious place, but then they were given money to actually yes. live their dreams and not put them on hold. Yes, it was. It was. It, it has been an extremely successful and effective program. It's not scalable, right? So, uh, so we we had to hack the um, we had to hack the prestige status thing, where it was as hard or harder to get a Teal Fellowship than to get into a top university, right? And uh, and so that's that's part that's that's very hard to scale. Well, so when when I was looking at that program uh, for you. One of the things that I floated was the idea that if you look at every advanced degree, like a um, a JD or an MD, uh, PhD, none of them seem to carry the requirement of having a BA, which is quite mysterious. Mm-hmm. And if you fail to get mm-hmm. a PhD, let's say, there's usually an embedded master's degree that you get mm-hmm. as a going away present. Mm-hmm. And... Therefore, if you could get people to skip college, you could give them perhaps four years of their lives back, Mm -hmm. and you could use the first year of graduate school, which is very often kind of a rapid recapitulation Mm -hmm. of what undergraduate was. Everybody's on a level playing Mm -hmm. field. And then at worst comes to worst, people would leave with a master's. They would in general get a stipend because a lot of the tuition uh, is remitted to them Mm -hmm. in graduate programs. Is that a viable program to get some group of people who are highly motivated um, to avoid the BA entirely as sort of the administrator's degree rather than the professor's degree? Um, let me see. I, yeah, so I mean, there are all these different subtle critiques I can have or disagreements. But yeah, I think, look, I think, I think the BA is not as valuable as it looks I also think the PhD is not as valuable as it looks. Oh, so you know how I, to sort, hurt a I sort of feel it's it's a, it's 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 a it's a problem across the board. Uh, it strikes me that what you're proposing is a bit of an uphill struggle because um, at the top universities, the BA is the far more prestigious degree than the PhD at this point. So if you're at Stanford or Harvard, um, you know it's 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 pretty hard to get in um, to the undergraduate. Um, and then you have you have more PhD students than you have undergraduates. Um, there are all these people who are um, on you know a very questionable track. They made yep. questionable choices. It's not clear, you know, um, uh, you know. And so if you, you sort of uh, and 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 uh, they're probably they probably are going to have some sort of psychological breakdown in their future. Um, you know, the dating prospects aren't good. There are all these things that that. Are, are a little bit off. So yeah, in theory, if you had a super um, tightly controlled PhD program, right. that might work. But uh, but you have to at least make those those two changes. You know, as it is, um, the people in, uh, in in graduate school, it's like it's like tribbles in Star Trek. And uh, you know, it's it's, it's it, there's you know we have you know just so many, and and they all feel expendable and uh, un, 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 unneeded, and it's it's sort of. Uh, it's just uh, that's that's not a good that's not a good place to be, you know. And uh, and whereas I think the undergraduate conceit is still that it's more, you know, K selected instead of R selected. That it's more um, that everybody is special and, and valuable. You know, that's often not true either. So I'm, I'm, I'd be critical of both, right? And uh, and I think, <clears throat> but yeah, if we if we could if we could have a real PhD that was that required, you know, that was was much harder and that actually led to sort of an academic position or some other uh, comparable position, that would be, that'd be good. You know, one of the questions I always come back to in, in this is what is the teleology of these programs? Where do they, where do they go? Mm. And, uh, and what I think has gone, you know, um, and one of the analogies I've, I've come up with is, you know, I think undergraduate, elite undergraduate education is like junior high school football. 
you know, it's junior prob- high school football. I did not prob- see that coming. It's, 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 it's playing football in junior high schools, probably not damaging for you, but it's not uh, going anywhere. I see. Because if you keep playing football in high school and college and then uh, professionally, that's just bad. And the, the better you are, the more successful you are, the, the, um, the, uh. le- the less well it works. And, uh, and then the question is, what's the motivational structure? You know, when I, when I was an undergraduate in the 1980s, there was still a part of it where you thought the professors were cool. It, it you know, might be something you'd like to be at some point in the future, you know, um, and, and they were role models, just like in you know, junior high school football and an NFL player, you know, would have been a role model. But now it just looks like ago. brain damage in both sides. And now, now we <laughs> think it's, 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 you're just, yeah, you're just doing lots of brain damage and, uh, and it's, it's a track that doesn't work. And therefore the teleology sort of is broken down. So undergraduate part of the teleology was that it was preparing you for graduate school and that part doesn't work. And that's what's, that's, what's gotten deranged. Hmm. And then graduate school, well, it's preparing you to be a postdoc. And then, well, that's the postdoc apocalypse or whatever you want to call it. Postdocalypse. 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 You heard it here, folks. Postdocalypse. Um, and and so, uh, but just at every step, I, I, I think yeah. the the teleology of the system is is in really bad shape. It's it's of course this is true of all these institutions with fake growth uh, that are sociopathic or pathological. But but I, the universities, it's 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 striking as is very bad. And I, I think this was already true in important ways, you know, back in the eighties, early nineties, when I was going through the system. Uh, okay. And when I think when I think back on it, um, I think I was most intensely motivated academically in high school because the teleology was really clear. You were trying to get into a good college. And then by the time I was at Stanford, it was a little bit less clear. By the time I was at law school, really unclear where that was going. And, uh, and I was, by the time I was, you know, 25, I was far less motivated than, than at age 18. So, uh, and I I think these dynamics are just, you know, more extreme than ever today. What I find so dispiriting about your, um, your diagnosis is first of all, that I agree with it. Second of all, um, if we don't train people in these fields, like if we don't get people to go into molecular biology or or bioinformatics or something Mm. like that, we're never going to be able to find the low hanging fruit in that orchard. So it seems to me that um, we have to find some way that it, it makes sense for a life to explore these questions. Uh, one of the things that I don't understand, and I don't know if you have any insight. Go ahead. And you, no, go, go ahead. Keep going. Well, I was going to say is that um, it feels to me that almost all of our institutions are carbon copies of each other at different levels of quality, and that there are only a tiny number of actually innovative institutions. Mm-hmm. It used to be that you know Reed College was Sex, Drugs, and Goethe, and you had you know St. John's. Uh, with the great books curriculum that didn't look like anything else or deep springs and the university of Chicago was crazy about young people, Mm -hmm. but the diversity of institutions is unbelievably low. Is that wrong? I think that's, that's fair. But I, I would say, yeah, the, 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 um, the bigger problem with a lot of these fields, it's yeah, I I think we have to keep training People, I think we need to keep training people in physics or even these fields that seem completely dead. I'm not, you know, That's super important. But, but I, I think the think. question yeah. um, we have to always ask is how many people should we be training? And you know, my intuition is you want you, know, you, know, you want the gates to be very tight. Uh, one of my friends is a um, um, is in the uh, professor in the Stanford Economics Department, um, and uh, the way he describes it to me is they have about thirty graduate students starting PhDs in economics at Stanford every year. It's, you know, six to eight years to get a PhD. At the end of the first year, the faculty has an implicit uh, ranking of the students where they sort of agreed who the top three or four are. The, top, the, the ranking never changes. The top three or four have a, are able to get a good position in academia. The others, not so much. And, um, and you know, this is, it, we're pretending to be kind to people and we're actually being cruel. Incredibly cruel. Um, and, uh, and, and so I think that... Uh, that uh, if there are going to be, you know, it's a supply demand of labor. If there are going to be good, um, good uh, positions in academia uh, where you can, you know, have a reasonable life. It's not a monastic vow of poverty that you're taking to be an academic. If, if we're going to have that, uh, you want, um, you don't want this sort of Malthusian struggle. You know, if you have 10 graduate students in a chemistry lab and you have to have a fist fight for a Bunsen burner or a beaker and, you know, 
And if some, somebody says one politically incorrect thing, you can happily throw everyone them off out of the overcrowded bus. The bus is still overcrowded with nine people on it. That's that's what's unhealthy. And so, yes, it's, 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 it would be a mistake to say we should dial this down and have, you know, zero people go right. to these fields. That, no, that, okay, that, but this is what's scary that's, to that's, me. That's not, that's, that's not what I'm advocating or what, what's, what's being advocated here. But, uh, but, um, but there is a, there's a point where if you just add more and more people in, 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 a, in a starvation Malthusian context, that's not healthy. <laughs>